Is this thing on? Can you hear me? You can hear me. All right. So please take a seat as we get started with our celebration tonight. It is so good to see all of you. Thank you for joining us today for this wonderful celebration of librarianship. I am Emily Drabinsky, president of the American Library Association. Today, we honor this year's recipients of the I Love My Librarian Award. Library workers and advocates nationwide, I want to wholeheartedly thank Carnegie Corporation of New York for funding this important award. Your support allows us to continue celebrating the impact of libraries and librarians year after year. Thank you also to the New York Public Library, another longtime supporter of this initiative. I would also like to acknowledge the members of this year's I Love My Librarian Awards Selection Committee, who devoted many hours to choosing our 10 honorees. They are, and if you can stand up so that we can recognize you, Lessa Kananiopua Palayo Lazada, past president of ALA and chair of the Selection Committee. <laughs> Kathy Lester, past president of the American Association of School Librarians. Aaron Ellis, past president of the Association of College and Research Libraries. Maria McCauley, past president of the Public Library Association. And Carol Matute, vice president of Branch Libraries and Patron Services at the New York Public Library. Thank you so much to these five leaders for their hard work and insight. Just a few months ago, we started with a pool of nearly 1,400 nominations submitted by library users across the nation. Thanks to the selection committee's expertise and dedication, we now have 10 outstanding honorees joining us today. Since its inception in 2008, only 160 out of the nearly 200,000 librarians in the United States have been honored with the I Love My Librarian Award. And now, I'm thrilled to introduce you to our newest group of honorees tonight, all of whom have transformed lives in their libraries, cities, schools, and campuses. Their stories are a powerful reminder of the many ways libraries build community, expand access, and promote inclusion for all. Our honorees are educators, empowering students and lifelong learners of all ages through access to information and instruction. From leading enriching programs to supporting research and scholarship, they are committed to spreading knowledge throughout their communities. Our honorees are collaborators, engaging with organizational partners and securing funding to serve their community's needs. Our honorees are champions of inclusion, expanding access to traditionally underserved populations and ensuring that collections represent everyone in their communities. They've worked to make their libraries spaces where people of all backgrounds feel welcome. To our 10 award recipients, your impact goes far beyond the walls of your library. Thank you for your passion and your dedication. And now, without further ado, I am delighted to introduce this year's I Love My Librarian Award honorees. Prizes, activities, free books, fun, the biannual Novel Nation book fairs at Rubidoux Middle School have it all, thanks to library media specialist, Melissa Corey. Because of her efforts, which include researching, purchasing, and sorting more than 1,200 low-cost, high-quality books each fall and spring, each student takes home three free books, over 5,000 to date. Many in this room have likely benefited from Melissa's work on behalf of our professional community, 
In 2022, she created the website Visual Book Lists, which features an extensive list of printable and customizable book recommendations. And in her term as president of the Missouri Association of School Librarians, Melissa played a central role advocating for intellectual freedom in the state school libraries. As one of her nominators wrote, Melissa Corey is not just our school librarian. She is an educator, a leader, a mentor, a technology whiz, coworker, and friend. Congratulations, Melissa. This is a really full room. Um, it kind of hits you when you get up here. Um, life is really strange because yesterday morning I was judging our school's spelling bee and now I'm here. So um, I think the spelling bee was a little bit easier. Um, so first of all, I would like to thank the American Library Association, the Carnegie Corporation, and the New York Public Library for this immense honor. I am only here because of so many people that have had an impact on my life, and I would like to thank a special few. Thank you to my colleagues at Rubidoux Middle School, including Marta, Doug, Doug Stacy, um, for all believing that I was worthy of this award, as well as my bestie at the St. Joseph Public Library, um, Misty, who is um, married to Mr. Snyder, one of my nominators. Um, you serve as my second family and my home away from home. Thank you to my first family, my husband Brent, who is also a school librarian. I married very well. <laughs> and my kids, Grace and Luke, for your constant love, support, and humor. Thank you to all the honorees of this amazing award, um, all of you, for the amazing work you do for your communities. It's been a pleasure to meet you in person um, and put faces with names and the work that you do. Thank you to my parents, Gerald and Linda, for never saying no to a book, any book, um, which is kind of a rarity um, in today's world, and for taking me to the library all the time. And last but not least, thank you to my all-time favorite student, Randy. I always tell my new students that that title is already taken. I first met Randy over 15 years ago when I was in my first year as a high school librarian. A few years after graduation, Randy messaged me to catch up. He told me about his work, his education, and his life. And then he said, Mrs. Corey, I have to tell you that I am gay, and I will completely understand if you don't want to speak to me anymore. I told Randy that wasn't an issue for me, and I was really glad he was comfortable enough to tell me. You see, sometimes the school librarian is the only person in a building that accepts a student for not only who they are, but for also who they will become. And I will tell you that Randy is a fabulous, successful adult. He's, I think, 31 now, which ages me a little bit, but that's okay. Who gives back through his volunteerism with Crisis Text Line and the world is a much better place because he is in it. So school librarians, especially my colleagues who are here tonight, Diana and Gabriel, I know the work we do is so, so difficult, but it is so, so important to students like Randy. Thank you so much. Wow. For the thousands of students at Lane Community College in Eugene, Oregon, Claire Dannenbaum is making positive, lifelong impacts. Her dedication to supporting students' scholarly efforts has inspired many to pursue advanced degrees after graduating. Her passion for art and creativity not only shines through in her oversight of the library's makerspace, but has also allowed her to forge mentorship pathways with students. As one alumnus recalled about a simple conversation with Claire, I learned over the years that I attended Lane, at, over the years that I attended Lane, that Claire Dannenbaum was much more than a librarian. She became my teacher and mentor and showed a supportive, empathetic, and welcoming spirit that always went beyond my expectations. 
Unfortunately, Claire is unable to be here today, but please give her a round of applause. Congratulations, Claire. In the nation's most ethnically and culturally diverse county, where over, over half of residents were born outside the US, Fred Gittner has been serving immigrants and asylum seekers for 27 years as part of Queens Public Library's New Americans program. He and his team work each day to break down language barriers and connect new Americans with education opportunities and resources they need to successfully acclimate to life in New York and in the United States. From New American Corners inside library branches to live phone interpretation service in more than 240 languages. As one nominator wrote, Fred is always on the go and never misses a day to involve our library in helping new immigrants in our neighborhoods. It is truly amazing how one man can make a, such a beautiful difference in the lives of new America, immigrants, their families, and his fellow library professionals. Congratulations, Fred. I'm glad the previous speaker left me a little extra time, so, since I have, I have only, only two pages. So, um, uh, good evening. First of all, I'd like to thank the award sponsors, the Carnegie Corporation of New York, the New York Public Library, and the American Library Association for their extraordinary recognition of the work librarians do day in and day out to make a difference in people's lives and I'm honored to be in the company of my fellow awardees. Libraries have played a major role in my life. I guess you could characterize me as a library nerd. My first library job was in fourth grade when I was selected by my elementary school librarian to help take inventory of the library. There was no pay, of course, but I did get out of phys ed class once a week for the project. <laughs> She was my first mentor. As soon as I got my working papers at 16, I applied for a job at my local public library, the John C. Hart Memorial Library in Westchester County, where I was hired by the library director as a page working after school, and then evenings and Saturdays as well for $1.50 an hour. The summer after my sophomore year in college, I contacted all of the libraries in the area and ended up working the equivalent of full time in three different libraries, where I had a, a great mentor who was passionate about customer service, Michael Steinfeld, director of the Mount Kisco Public Library, who later went on to direct the Beverly Hills Public Library. And while getting my MLS at Rutgers, I was fortunate to get a job at Princeton University Library's reference department, where I was mentored by Ms. Weld, a true reference expert. But my last mentor, and really the person who inspired me for the work we do in the New Americans program at Queens Public Library, is Adriana Tandler, who was head of the program for almost 25 years. She really showed me how by working together with community-based organizations serving immigrants, libraries can make a difference in people's lives as we help them learn English and adapt to life in the United States, while still retaining their mother tongue and culture. I always had a strong tie to and an admiration for immigrants. All of my grandparents were immigrants who came through Ellis Island in the early 20th century, arriving from the Russian Empire, but what would now be Ukraine. From them, I knew how hard immigrants worked to make a better life for their families. At the New Americans program, we have used cultural programming with bilingual marketing as a hook to attract newcomers to the library to learn about the varied services available. And we offer coping skills workshops in several different languages to help immigrants adapt to their new country. Programs in health, in housing, education. One of my first assignments when I was hired at QPL was to coordinate the creation of 12 bilingual language guides and bookmarks for staff in the most spoken languages in Queens that enabled customers to point to a question or a service they needed, such as getting a library card, 
and the staff member could then see the translation and provide assistance. I love that Queens is the most ethnically diverse county in the United States, with over 200 languages spoken, a challenge to be sure, one that I worked to ease most recently with the introduction of access for our staff system-wide to the language line interpretation system via call to an 800 number. This has proved especially valuable with the influx of migrants over the past two years, so that not only Spanish or French interpreter can be found, but one for Wolof or Pashto or Fulani. Working with immigrants who go through our ESOL program and our citizenship classes has been especially rewarding. We receive feedback that someone has gotten the job they wanted or gotten into college, that the citizenship class or individual mock interview session has enabled them to pass their citizenship exam. What I've always admired about the library profession is the variety of paths one can take and services that can be provided to reach the end goal of satisfying the needs of the customer. Fortunately, I've been able to do that, just to do just that in my many roles at Queens Public Library, including acting as the library's quote unquote official international ambassador. Finally, I'd like to thank several people our chief librarian, Nick Buron, who's here tonight for his support of immigrant services and QPL's international relations activities. Sharon Myrie, our vice president of programs and services who couldn't be here, but who I thank for trusting my judgment. The dedicated New Americans program staff represented here by our administrative assistant, Madeline Garcia, who is the glue for our team and keeps us on track. And last but not least, my nominators, Susan Sharoma and Selena Sharman from Queens Central Library. Selena is here tonight, and as a former staff member of the New Americans program, worked tirelessly to reach out to our growing Bangladeshi community in Queens. Thank you all for being here, and I'm really honored to have received this award. Thank you. There is no shortage of community leaders in the brick capital of the world who love Claire Graham, director of the Malvern Hot Spring County Library in Arkansas. That should come as no surprise, considering all she's done to expand library access across the county's rural landscape, from converting coin-fed newspaper racks into little free libraries, to creating the state's first book racks in creating the first state's first book kiosk to offer books, books, movies, and more in neighboring Bismarck, to supporting the community's effort to build a future library annex and park. Clara is building a strong future for Malvern and its library, brick by brick. As one of her nominators wrote, Claire was, is, and will always be an intelligent, loving, strategic, compassionate, resourceful, caring, wise, joyful, focused, and giving leader for her staff, town, county, region, and community as a whole. Congratulations, Claire. Thank you all so much. It is such an honor to be here today. I would like to first start by thanking the American Library Association, the Carnegie Corporation, and the New York Public Library for this award. I'm here today and I look out into this crowd with all of you library lovers and I'm like, ah, this is where I need to be. You guys know the vital importance of libraries. We, libraries are the cornerstone of a knowledgeable and vibrant society. First things first, I would like to thank my grandmother, Winifred. She's in England, hi grandma. She started my love for libraries at a very young age. She would take me every weekend, and it just, I'm so thankful to her for many things, that being one. Also a big thank you to my mother, who took that brave trip from the United Kingdom when I was eight years old. Um, thank you for always encouraging me, and um, encouraging me to dream big and do big. Next, I wanna thank my husband, Chris Graham, who loaded up his generator in the back of his four-wheel drive to get me here today. 
But not just that, he has been my backbone, my support. Uh, he helped me in many ways, not only um, get my education, but just day to day. Thank you so much, honey. Next, I would like to thank my community. We have a true community-led library. And when I think of my library, I think of my patrons. It was just last week we had a patron reach out, want to get in cahoots with our staff to plan a proposal in our library. Not only that, just we see Junior. He's there every day. He wants to give you two little Debbies and two blow pops, and I mean two. We also have Mr. Valentino, who shows his appreciation to our staff by bringing goods from his garden. So many community patrons that are so supportive. I appreciate you all so much. Next, I would like to thank our county judge, Dennis Thornton. He started the community-led initiative, the Hot Spring County Conversations, to make Hot Spring County a place to live, work, and play. He has been alongside the library, supporting us and including us in those efforts, and I'm very appreciative. So libraries, the spirit of collaboration. Not only do we have support from our wonderful patrons, our local government, we can call our fire department and they will come read a book <laughs> to as many times as we would like. Uh, we have a strong partnership with our downtown group. Our library is in the heart of downtown Malvern, Arkansas. I also want to shout out to our homeless coalition. Homeless coalition. Um, they are really helping us make sure that we can point people in the direction who have needs that they can help assist. Also, back to the spirit of collaboration, Wonderful things can happen. Our local Rotary Club, we started our own affiliation of the Hot Spring County Imagination Library, thanks to those efforts. So I've talked a little bit about libraries and people coming together. I wanna to talk about my friends groups. I have two friends groups. How blessed am I? My Malvern friends group um, worked to <laughs> develop a story trail and garden behind our library and so much more. Our Bismarck Library friends have helped us develop our vision for our library in the park in Bismarck, along with bake sales, book sales, t-shirt sales, and just volunteering at our events. Thank you to both of my friends groups so much. I wanna shout out to the Mid-Arkansas Regional Librarians. We're in a five county system, and not only do we shuffle books between us constantly, I'm talking probably 600 per week, um, that affects people in, in such a way. One letter I got from a patron, thank you for sharing books amongst your libraries. I don't have to wait for the next series and this is taking me, taking me places. So shout out to the Mid-Arc librarians and Kina, who's a one-woman show in her little library doing so much for her community. I'd like to send a shout out to the Arkansas State Library and the All In Group. I had the opportunity to learn a lot and just the shameless stealing that goes on between our libraries. It's a network and I'm just so blessed to be a part. Okay, my staff. So I don't do anything alone. So I do want to take a minute to shout out my staff. Barry Honnold, who's our bookmobile coordinator, it is his life's mission to get grants for giveaway books, to visit every nursing home in the five county region, to visit every daycare, to make sure that kids are receiving books at every opportunity. Thank you, Barry, so much for all you do. As far as I just have a magical group of people that I work with, but it doesn't stop in our walls. We're not stuck in our building. We're offering programming 30 minutes away. We're bringing Santa to Bismarck. We're giving free trees, and when you say free trees in Arkansas, expect <laughs> a very long line. But it's just so much, and it takes passion. When we're talking 80 kids in a Lego club, you know, wrangling that is a lot of fun. And then the calls for tax forms, eclipse glasses. Um, but it's not just that. My staff goes above and beyond every day to serve our community. They take time every summer to decorate our library. 
Uh, the year before last, it was an underwater theme. We had pa patrons saying it reminded them of Disneyland. And y'all, that takes a lot. Uh, they made a Mr. Rogers tree last year, hand cut leaves out of books. I mean, it is intricate, it is beautiful. Thank you, thank you for all you do. Not to mention computer help. You know, it's essential nowadays. Um, taking the time with the people who come in, giving them that smile. And then a patron in crisis and how they manage that and connect them. This is one of my favorite quotes. The most important asset of any library goes home at night, the library staff by Neil Gaiman. In conclusion, I am so <laughs> tremendously honored and grateful to have received this award and the recognition for libraries as a vital institution. Libraries are not just buildings with books, but are invaluable institutions that empower individuals, foster lifelong learning, create a knowledgeable and vibrant society. Let us continue to celebrate and cherish our libraries, for they are the gateways that unlock the doors to wisdom, inspiration, and endless possibilities. Thank you so much. Students at Smith Middle School in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, command ownership of the library space. And that's all a part of Gabriel Grana's plan to center the library as the school's focal point. With a minority majority student population, many of whom receive reduced lunch benefits, Gabriel advocates, advocates for the library to elevate its role in equalizing the educational playing field for all students, regardless of their background. From a genre-fied collection to a growing makerspace, he works to ensure the library has books that reflect students' experiences and tools they need to grow as individuals, improve their skills, and express themselves. As one of his nominators wrote, instead of saying, I'm just the librarian, that's all I do, Gabriel says, I am the librarian, what else can I do? Congratulations, Gabriel. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of people. Hi, everybody. Um, so I got to start out by uh, shouting out um, Celia Cruz, a very famous Cuban singer. Can I get an azúcar from everybody? On three, on three. Ready? One, two, three. Azúcar. Perfect. I love it. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to do some shout outs in Spanish to start uh, because my grandmother is watching from home and I want to make sure she understands some of what I'm saying. So, primero que nada, quiero darle gracias a mi abuela por su apoyo. Además de ser mi abuela, es mi amiga. A mi mamá por siempre est eh, estar a mi lado, mi papá por su alegría, a mis hermanos, my brothers, mis mejores amigos en el mundo, y a mi familia entera. Gracias. Viva Cuba. And of course, I got to shout out my wife, my partner, my best friend, who always uh, encourages me to be my most authentic self. Te amo, bella. I don't know where the camera is, but I love you. All right. <laughs> Um, I want to shout out, uh, of course, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't shout out my Cyclone family, Smith Cyclones from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Cyclone Strong. Um, and I want to shout out the ALA and Carnegie and the New York Public Library, of course. Thank you so much for honoring me and all these fantastic libraries. Like, I can't believe I'm in this crowd. This is mind-blowing. All right, so uh, I was struggling uh, to write this, like a lot, and it wasn't just my procrastination. Um, <laughs> A lot of false starts, a lot of really like absurd abandoned ideas, like these overwrought concepts, it didn't work. Um, and then something hit me. Uh, the struggle for me to talk about myself has been like a pretty big thing and to talk about what happens in my library has been rough because it feels like I'm bragging. Um, and so I had to think back. Uh, this past summer I got to um, join up with a bunch of other librarians from North Carolina. Uh, we have this thing called NCAT in our state, which is this fantastic blessing that we have. It's this space where we can get PD um, that's covered, it's paid for, they feed us, they have these chefs, they cook delicious meals. Anyway, um, and we talked about advocacy a lot this past summer, and um, I realized that it's not bragging, it's advocacy, right? When we talk about what we do, is advocacy, right? Put it out there, put that message out there. Yes, clap, clap, yes, I love it. Um, because libraries matter. And I'm gonna mention some students now, I'm not gonna say their names because I didn't get clearance from them, but um, I'll just drop the initial and we'll go from there. Um, libraries matter to D. D, who was introduced to me because he was getting into some trouble and he needed somebody in his corner. Um, and he could spit, he could rap. That, that, that was his thing, he could rap, me at bars. Um, so you can imagine how high his eyebrow went when he was introduced to me 
to mentor him in rapping. It's like the librarian, what? Um, I showed him some of my old rhymes and I showed him some of my newer ones. Um, and after some, some joking about what does not doesn't count as rap nowadays, um, we got through it and I mentored him throughout it. Uh, we worked on his craft, even when it was like, you know, it's all good, just close the door, you can cuss, no problem. <laughs> Libraries matter to D. Libraries matter to Y. Y, who we got into a little bit of a debate in the morning, you know, they say don't engage with students if they're kind of like having a struggle. And I, I, I thought it was gonna go somewhere positive, so I just kept going, I kept talking to her. And we left things on bad terms, and I heard the thing that I least wanna hear come out of a student's mouth, whatever, I don't care, as she walked out. So, like, a, that's a death sentence. Um, but why, who came back later to the library and just ran in my office, sat in there, and just started telling me about her relationship with her dad, out of nowhere, like apropos of nothing, telling me the whole story of her relationship with her dad. Um, and then when I brought up our disagreement from earlier, uh, she rolled her eyes. Um, she said, I knew this was coming, but we squashed the beef and uh, with smiles all around, and now she calls me bestie. Um, <laughs> Library matters, and if she's watching this, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, library matters to A, A who went by a different name at home, and who, for whom there's a law in North Carolina right now that I could not refer to them as that name. Uh, a who told me that they still wanted to help run Harry Potter Week because the stories belong to them and not to the author. Yes, clap for that. Libraries matter to G. G who pulls huge piles of the most random and varied assortment of nonfiction books uh, possible, um, making me uh, ensure that my nonfiction collection covers as much of everything as my budget allows. I mean, every single kind of book you could think about. Um, and occasionally, uh, they wax philosophically with me in Spanglish, which is a welcome thing. Um, library matter, uh, sorry, libraries matter. These stories matter. And it matters that we bring our most authentic selves to the table. So that these, so that my students, so that your students, so that your patrons can develop into their best selves in our spaces. Thank you so much. In the aftermath of the 2018 mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, that left 17 dead and 17 more injured, library media specialist and survivor, Diana Haneski has been navigating her community through the trauma and healing process with joy, mental health support, engaging reading programs, and special help from a furry little friend. Diana and River, the school's official therapy dog, provide critical emotional support for students and staff each day and have gone on to become a Hope Animal Assisted Crisis Response Team. But while mental health support is central to Diana's work, she's still creating a culture of reading and improving literacy within Stoneman Douglas and beyond. As one of her nominators wrote, Diana embodies the essence of an exceptional librarian. She has touched the lives of countless individuals and transformed our library into a vibrant hub of learning and connection. Congratulations, Diana. How did this book-loving, joy-seeking, mom-to-sons, Carrie and Kyle, and River, our school therapy dog, daughter of immigrants, get to be honored at the Oscars for the library world tonight? <laughs> First, I think we need to start with a breath. What do you think? <laughs> do it with me. Let's do an inhale and an exhale together. Feels good, right? It helps us focus. It helps, and it's what I do now. Gratitude also helps. So thank you to the American Library Association, the Carnegie Corporation, and the New York Public Library. I love them all. And a big heartfelt thank you to all the staff and students who so beautifully wrote in the I Love My Librarian packet. There was like 25 people plus that wrote in there. And a big thank you to our principal, Michelle Cafford, 
She just lets me do my thing in the library. <laughs> so I've loved libraries since, as an elementary age kid, I visited the about to be closed Old Danbury Public Library building where the smelly books took me places. And then they soon made a new library. And I loved searching those new stacks of books for another Nancy Drew book. It was after school at the Moore Street Elementary School where I danced to James Brown. Libraries were always joyful to me. So I went to college, saw a sign that the, the radio station needed me because they needed typists. I was like, I could type. So I went to the club and you know, I ended up in a broadcasting career for a decade. I was on the air. Then after having our sons, I worked at the mall. And there was a customer that came in with one of those teacher shirts. It said media specialist. So Mia, you know, was curious because I was thinking radio and, you know, broadcasting. And she said she was a middle school librarian. I was like, what? I love libraries. It never occurred to me to work at one. So I was very inspired by that shirt. So you never know what's going to get you. So I started thinking and planning. And then I started my FSU master's program the same year that our son started kindergarten. Yep, that's how I did it. So fast forward 26 years. <laughs> I love helping students connect with a book. I love providing a safe haven to all who need it. I love listening to their stories and connecting. I love showing them resources and, and ways to help them be independent and have the freedom to read. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm grateful for friends and family. My husband, Ray, he's watching River right now. <laughs> and the librarians that have helped me along the way. There's so many of you, and some of you are here. <laughs> they taught me self-care. I thawed from a frozen state I was in after the horror of a mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. I was used to giving hugs, and now I needed them. The body remembers. I had no appetite, I couldn't read. It took months, and a dear librarian friend sent me an audiobook, and that's what got me reading again. It felt good. It was hard to feel good and search for joy when there's so much loss and sadness. But moving forward with love and kindness helps me in my search for joy. And I realized it's okay to have fun because you can't take that away, too. So in the library, we <laughs> thank you. So in the library, we take a moment and breathe. We move, we walk, do yoga, tai chi, we read books, sit on the soft seating, and pet river. I've become more mindful and understanding than ever and learned many reasons um, for our youth to be stressed and have anxiety. So Jean, our amazing library clerk, she helped us set up a Zen Den for everyone because we all need a place to chill and settle our glitter once in a while. <laughs> it's taken some time, but practicing self-care so I can help others is my lane. So our river and books, they bring joy and I hope you find joy every day too. Thank you so much. At the University of Puerto Rico, Majaguez, this is Patent and Trademark Resource Center, Librarian Gladys Lopez Soto helps students, inventors, and entrepreneurs turn ideas into reality. Her knowledge of intellectual property from copyright and creative commons to patents and trade secrets is recognized across Puerto Rico and beyond. And libraries across the US have pointed to her work to serve their Spanish-speaking populations. Beyond intellectual property, Gladys brings global cultural experiences to K-12 students through the Mi Museo Nuestros Museos program, which virtually connects students from different cultures and encourages them to share experiences about cultural heritage sites. As one of her nominators wrote, 
Gladys represented the soul, warmth, and hard work of all Puerto Rican librarians. She's a true inspiration and a shining beacon in our community. Congratulations, Gladys. Good night to all. Yo soy Gladys López y soy puertorriqueña. I grew up in a rural area, Barrio Piedras Blancas in San Sebastián. At that time, we, didn't, we did not have any libraries in the elementary school, nor in the town. When I was a kid, I never had a library card. I didn't grow up around libraries or books. Nobody told me that in my middle school, we'd had a library. One day in middle school, I misbehaved in the classroom. I like to talk a lot. <laughs> and as a punishment, my teacher sent me to the library. <laughs> Can you imagine the perception that I had and other children had about the libraries? if the teacher sent to you there as a punishment. But that perception changed when I entered the University of Puerto Rico. I discovered a huge building with a mural of Prometeo, full of extraordinary librarians, art exhibitions, books, presentations, services dedicated to the handicapped students, and the best Puerto Rican collection. This, since that moment, I have been in love with libraries and I have never been separate from them. In Rio Piedras and then in Mayagüez, El Colegio, I discovered the link with the libraries and the society, the remarkable services that the librarians bring to their citizens and the necessity to advocate for more and better services in each corner of Puerto Rico. But the huge buildings are not the most important. The most important are the Puerto Ricans librarians that day by day do better things for their community with less resources. I feel that this award is not only for me, it's for the dedication of Puerto Rican librarians that work hard, are brave, persistent, and instead of thinking about themselves, they think about changing the perception of a library as a punishment. Like Sole Biblioteca Rodante, with La Maletita Viajera, or Arlene Garcia, with their iron project Machinto, and many other Puerto Rican librarians that made a difference on their community on their barrios. This award is for you. Thank you to my sisters, my husband David, and my beloved son Brian, my mom Goni, Titi Mili, and my Pepino family for your love, and for always being there to support my initiatives to serve others. Thank you, American Library Association, the New York Public Library, and Carnegie Corporation, of New York for giving me the honor to bring this prestigious work to Puerto Rico. Yo soy Gladys López, bibliotecaria, y soy de Puerto Rico. Thank you. From Northwestern University's Maker Lab, Instructional Technologies Librarian Ted Kibalio is molding opportunities for vulnerable populations while serving as a mentor to students. As part of a summer program facilitated by World Relief Chicago, he introduces refugee and asylum-seeking youth to new technologies and STEM skills in the university's makerspace and trains student workers and local high school interns to lead activities such as video production and 3D printing. Ted is also involved in the university's prison education program, working with dozens of incarcerated students to provide research support, information literacy instruction, and other resources. As one of his nominators wrote, Ted is a true treasure, 
and his presence has enriched the lives of everyone he has touched. His ability to uplift, inspire, and make a difference in the lives of those around him is truly exceptional. Congratulations, Ted. First, uh, <clears throat> I want to thank uh, my partner of 27 years uh, for her unwavering support of my career. Um, and I also want to thank the close group of people who have nominated me. Uh, just considering me for this award is just, uh, just amazing. And the last group of people I want to thank are my fellow honorees. <clears throat> it's just the, uh, just for them raising the bar this year uh, for all librarians just to see how uh, and hear the work that they do uh, is very truly inspiring. <clears throat> Sorry, I gotta get my speech out. <laughs> So one of the services I lead in our library is the makerspace, as you heard. On the, on the poster, on, one of the posters on the wall is based on a meme made popular a few years ago. <clears throat> it reads, uh, keep calm and carry on. Mine says, keep calm and make community. More often, libraries highlight their book collections or reading programs but for me tonight, it's about community. My community isn't just the students and faculty I serve, um, but the youth and displaced refugees that I teach STEM activities to during summer programs. My community is the incarcerated students. Uh, I find resources for their physics papers. My communities may look different than yours, but I would persuade you to highlight your communities by continuing to serve them with all the knowledge and expertise that you have. They deserve nothing less from us as librarians. A great example of these, as I mentioned, are my fellow honorees, as you've heard some of their stories tonight. If you get a chance tonight, I encourage you to get to know them beyond their work posted on the ALA website. Get to know their communities. Thank you again. I am humbled beyond words to be an honoree this evening. From library kid to viral sensation, Solano County Library Supervising Librarian Michael Threets spreads the joy of libraries across social media to his hundreds of thousands of followers. His heartwarming stories of patron interactions, words of encouragement to readers, and simple musings about his love for books have touched countless lives as he spreads awareness far and wide about the numerous impacts, positive impacts libraries have on their communities. Mental health support and representation are central to Michael's work on screen and off, reminding patrons near and far that they are not a burden and that they belong at the library. As one nominator wrote, Michael's contributions have had a transformative effect on our community. His devotion, innovation, and impact have elevated our library to new heights, cementing its role as a center for growth, learning, and inclusivity. Unfortunately, Michael is unable to join us tonight. Please join me in a round of applause. Congratulations, Michael. He may quip that his job is simply playing with dead people, but Allen County Library's Genealogy Center Manager, Kurt Witcher, 
is really empowering people to connect with their past and learn more about themselves. In fact, his expertise in genealogy is a claim to fame in Fort, for Fort Wayne, Indiana, directly contributing to thousands of visits to the community each year. Kurt's decades of work in African American and Jewish genealogy, Native American research, and more have culminated in one of the largest genealogy collections in the country and have supported the founding of several local genealogy societies. As one of his nominators wrote, everyone has a story to tell according to Kurt. And he has a gift of making everyone who comes to the Allen County Public Library to find their story feel seen and celebrated. Congratulations, Kurt. I am so honored to be here this evening and humbled to be amongst these honorees who have touched so many lives. What a great celebration of librarians and libraries. I would really like to, as everyone has done, thank the American Library Association, the Carnegie Corporation, and a special thanks to the New York Public Library. So why a special thanks to the New York Public Library? One of our awesome team members worked there for a few years, and now she's part of our team in the Genealogy Center of the Allen County Public Library. I wish you could space travel with me this evening to go back just for a moment to Fort Wayne, Indiana, and the surrounding community and the Allen County Public Library, because that community, that community in Northeast Indiana is in a, about a 130-year love affair with its library. They support us in so many astounding and amazing ways. What a blessing and what a responsibility to make sure that their trust in us, that we respect that and we deliver back to the community. Our library has as a theme, part of a theme and woven into our vision, is lifelong learning and discovery. And isn't that what our wonderful honorees have, have done in their communities? And I feel so blessed to share that, that zeal, that zest, that wonder for serving our patrons better. So in bringing more to our community and really supporting lifelong learning and discovery, we have had many leaders of our library, but one in the mid part of last century decided that so many people could benefit from family history when it really wasn't that much in vogue in public libraries. He started the Genealogy Center and he didn't expect it to really be that big of a thing as it is today, but he wanted a place where everyone, where anyone could come and find their story come and find their family history. And that was just like a spark into dry wood. And it took off like crazy. And the team that works with me at the Allen County Public Library and the Special Collections, they really embrace what the founder, you know, nearly, you know, in the 1960s, what would that be, 80 years ago? Basically said, we're gonna honor story. And that's the theme that we carry in our service posture. And that's what my colleagues do at the Allen County Public Library's Genealogy Center. They meet and greet everyone who comes in the door and are attentive to them and are really vested in helping them find their story. I believe it was Alex Haley, back during the nation's bicentennial forever ago, said something akin to marrow deep, marrow deep, not to the bone, but inside the bone in everyone is a longing to learn where they came from. And that's what we enjoy doing in the Genealogy Center. I started in the center as a page more than four decades ago, and every day 
It's new excitement about who's going to walk in the door and how can we serve that individual in helping her and helping him find their story. And you might think, eh, story, big deal. Aren't there more important things? And doesn't story just apply to those who maybe are in the records or those who are well-known or those who are majority in a community? And the blessing for us in the Genealogy Center is we believe in our hearts and we believe with all of our passion that everyone, everyone has a story and everyone has the right to know their story. Doesn't matter your ethnicity, your zip code, your education, what you really want to do in your free time. Everyone has a story and story is powerful. My entire team embraces what we call the power of story. Sociologists and educators and psychologists are all affirming that anywhere along the life continuum Story affects people's lives in positive, meaningful ways. With our young people, story gives them a sense of pride, a sense of I am somebody, I count, I matter, when they find their story. On the more mature side of the spectrum, with individuals who are having challenges with memory and are somewhere on the dementia spectrum, having someone tell them and show them in photographs their story. They're happier. It slows down memory regression. They're more compliant with family and medical professionals in making their life better. Isn't that core what we all do in this room and what we honor tonight? We make our patrons happy. We fulfill their lives, right? We all know, and particularly the honorees tonight, we all know that we don't do this alone. It's our teams, it's our colleagues that work with us that make things happen. It's not about us, it's not about me. It's about our teams, and it's about our community. At the Allen County Public Library, we have a great leadership team, which I'm privileged to be a part of. When the American Library Association, uh, their embargo of our nominations and our award was lifted, when that date passed, our executive director, Susan Beyer, said something that still strikes me as so true and to the core of the matter. When she was talking with it after the embargo period to our trustees, she said something along the lines of, it won't be an exact quote, but while this award is about Kurt, it's really not about Kurt. It's about what public libraries do and about how important the role is that public libraries have in helping their patrons, their citizens, their constituents, Find, present, and preserve local and family history. So kudos from me to all of you that work in your communities and help people find their stories. I don't know the source of this, nor if it's true. It tripped across my reading within the last week. Someone, somewhere, rightly or wrongly, correctly or incorrectly, attributed to Albert Einstein much brighter than I am, Albert Einstein said, the world's not about atoms. The world is about stories. Thank you. That was something, right? I want to thank you all for participating in this very special event. In a year of so many challenges to our profession, it is truly a joy to come together and celebrate something so uplifting and to see the positive and deep impact that librarians have on our communities. Please join me in a final round of applause for this year's I Love My Librarian Award honorees.
Now, let us continue the celebration as we enjoy our welcome reception. Let's have some refreshments together. Have a wonderful time at Live Learn X.